Good evening, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Welcome to our Tuesday, February 21st, 2022, Board of Commissioners Legislative Voting Meeting. I will call this meeting to order and I'll start with roll call. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present, Madam Chair. District 3 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Mark Alcarez. Present. And Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairwoman, present. Board of Commissioners, we do have an established quorum. Uh, this evening we have with us our Fire and EMS Public Information uh, uh, Director, Rick Martin, to provide us with an invocation. And I ask after the invocation if everyone could remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone could stand, please. Good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair. Board of Commissioners, County Administrator, Deputy and Assistant County Administrator, Deputy and County Clerk, and County Attorney. I'd like to begin with a Bible verse, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. May we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer this evening as a humble, public servant asking for protection, not just for me, but over all of our first responders, our citizens, our government employees, and our elected officials. I thank you, Lord, for the continued protection you've provided to get us through the day. I pray for the day that when I come to a government meeting, I can rejoice with unity in my community, but sadly, when I see so much wicked on social media, I see a divide still exists. I thank you, Lord, for the courage of those who speak out in support of those who cannot. The news media, it's a powerful thing. When misused, it's hard to overcome. But you, Lord, are not. I pray for protection from lies, deceitfulness, and wrongdoing. As our Board of Commissioners prepare for this evening's task over legislative matters, I pray for discernment and wisdom as they make their decisions. As we come to close, I pray for love to conquer all differences so that we come together as one, one community, one Douglas. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, um, Director. Martin of the Fire and EMS uh, Public Information uh, Division. Thank you so much for gracing us with prayer, prayer this evening. Board of Commissioners, uh, certainly I'll yield to the clerk at this time to see if anyone has signed up for public comment. Anyone sign up? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Not. Board of Commissioners, we had no one sign up for public comment this evening. So we're going to move on straight into our presentations. We have a presentation this morning. It's called Quest Development, I mean this morning, this evening, I'm still in the morning, Quest Development Homeless Housing. And uh, the presentation will be rendered by uh, Amy McCoy, the Amy McCoy. <laughs> That's right, back on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, madam. Uh, so, dear commissioners, um, I'm Amy McCoy. Uh, I stand before you today to speak about the issues, and that is a grave concern to our community and that is the affordable housing crisis affecting our most vulnerable residents in Douglas County. As housing prices continue to rise due to inventory shortages and the inflation crisis has only worsened the situation further in the rental space. It is a heart-wrenching to see that tent cities popping up in various areas of our county while we try to showcase our amenities to prospective business owners and buyers. It is clear that we need to identify land within the county to provide permanent placement housing for those in need. 
In the past 18 months, we have seen rental prices soaring, increasing on a much higher average than the $900 increase for normal mortgages, making it increasingly difficult for many families to make ends meet. As poverty numbers continue to rise, the end result is homelessness, which is unacceptable for any community. Therefore, I urge you to take immediate action and work with developers to provide affordable housing options for our most vulnerable residents. It is essential to prioritize this issue and take necessary steps to ensure that everyone has a safe and comfortable place to call home. However, building affordable housing units alone may not be enough to address the crisis. We also need your assistance in encouraging Department of Community Affairs to improve their voucher recipient process and pay scale to con be concurrent with today's prices and equitable for all parties involved. This will help solve many of our housing shortage needs in Douglas County until we can build a more diverse and housing supply. The lack of affordable housing has uh, several impacts on, well, severe impacts on families, especially children who are at risk of being uprooted from their homes and their schools. It is also affecting seniors and veterans who receive voucher, who have once served our country and deserve a safe and stable living situation. We must act now to address this crisis and show that we prioritize the well-being of our most vulnerable residents. In conclusion, I implore you to take action and work with developers to providing affordable housing options for our community while also encouraging the Department of Community Affairs to improve their voucher recipient process. By doing so, we can make a positive impact, providing stability for families and ensure that everyone has a safe and comfortable place to call home. And so I want to thank you in advance for drawing your attention to this critical issue. And I have an amazing developer we have met with, um, Jerry, uh, and I'm going to, yeah, with Quest Development, uh, Quest Communities. Um, they have a amazing program that we've met with and that have been able to uh, be very instrumental within the city of Atlanta and I think would be a great solution for us here in Deca uh, Douglas County. And I know, y'all know I'm everywhere. <laughs> but uh, a great solution for us here in Douglas County. And so I'd like to have Jerry come up with his presentation. And thank you. Okay, Jerry, if you could state your name and address for us, for the record. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very well. Okay. I'm Jerry McGoy. Yeah. Um, I'm with Quest Community. I live in um, um, 20, I just bought my house, uh, 29, over oh, 2809 Crescendo Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, um, on the west side of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you, Madam Chair, and all the commissioners um, for having me here today. I'm excited to tell y'all, show y'all a little bit about Quest Community and some of the work that we are doing in the city of Atlanta. And would love to, you know, bring some of the ideas from the concept here in Douglas County. As you see there, that is our impact center um, on the west side of Atlanta there. Um, that's where we are housed at, and that is a 30,000 square foot building that we built, which I will talk a little bit more about it. Um, Leonard Adams is our CEO. He started Quest over 21, 20 years ago uh, with one, one transitional home for the homeless, and today he grew it over, five, over 500 units. 13 single families, and over 40 employees um, today. I just wanted to acknowledge our, um, our Chief Operation Officer, um, um, Melanie Faison. She's our C, uh, COO of the, of the organization. And I am the um, Director of um, Real Estate Development with Quest. I handle all the real estate projects uh, from beginning to end with the company here. Um, Quest, our mission is, um, we are a, um, Quest is a community development organization and we're here to develop affordable housing and provide need-based 
community service to enhance the quality of life for underserved individuals and families. And we are a nonprofit developer. We are 501 C3 develop, developer there. We have four core focus with our organization. One is Quest Care. That is um, one of our core Quest Care. What we do, we provide um, mental health, also health care, and we also provide case management to not only our tenants, but also for um, the, the residents and people in the community that we provide the service for. And we also counsel them through drugs and alcohol um, treatment. Next, our core business is the real estate development, um, which I run that. Uh, we provide supportive housing, where we actually provide those services to those particular residents inside our property. Um, we provide those particular services because we want to provide supportive housing, make sure they are stable in their, in their home because the majority of these people are homeless or they are under 30% AMI income in the community there. We also provide affordable housing. Um, majority, affordable housing is normally about 50% below AMI and um, these particular tenants and residents, they do not need any services. They just need affordability and homes that we provide for them. And also we have our community uh, facilities, which I would show y'all um, our community uh, facilities. We also have um, Quest Financial. Quest fin Financial is a payee service that we um, provide for people that are receiving Social Security or our veterans. We actually receive their checks. We pay all their bills. Once we pay their bills, we, hand, uh, we, we give them debit cards so they can go out and buy the essential, whatever they need for their day-to-day -day operation. So we provide that um, service also. And then we also have uh, Quest um, Engagement. That is our, um, our division that goes out to the community. We talk to the community, talk to the community leaders, see what's going on in the community so we get feedback from them and the community. We also have the, uh, the West Side um, Wise Wednesday podcast. That's when city council people, people in the community, they come, they talk about their community, their district, and what they are doing in their particular community. So as you see, we always engage in the community. Now I'm talking about Quest West Side. We are planning to go elsewhere besides just the West Side, but I'll talk about Quest West Side right quick. As I mentioned, um, this is our impact center. It's a $30 million um, investment on the West Side by Boom and Lowry intersection. Majority of our money came from the um, Georgia Department of Community Affairs. We got a nine, um, we had some, uh, we got a grant for them. We also received the grant from the Archer, uh, Archer Blank Foundation, Home Depot. We also received money from um, 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 who has the West Side Future Fund. And I'm saying all of this is that we have, um, we really have our capital stack when we are um, building our projects and really make them affordable there. So this is our impact uh, center quickly. It's a 30,000 square footage. It housed um, majority of Quest employees at the top. At the bottom, we have actual uh, family dollar down there. Now this family dollar is a little different than your average family dollar because what we require from them is that they would provide more freezer in there so people could have bacon or eggs or lunch meat and all of that kind of stuff instead of just candy and sugar type of food there at that particular family dollar. Also, we house nonprofit in this particular center. Um, we have several nonprofits. So we make it very affordable for nonprofits because we want them to actually have a stable place to come and work with the community so they can invite and work with people there. So that is our building there. Quickly here is our community complex one and two. This is very, this is next door to us. 
this is where we provide uh, computer training, uh, workforce development, and also we um, work with uh, PNC Bank. They have mobile banking. They come there once a week to show, um, show people financial literacy. They also have cash on those, on those machines so people can use their debit cards and withdraw cash um, in partnership with um, um, PNC Bank that we work with there. This is just one of our complex, just to give you a couple of our complex and builders that we work with here. Um, this is our Quest Common. This is a 9% tax de um, deal project here. Um, it's 53 units. 32 units are 50% and 60% AMI. 21 units are, um, are, are supportive houses. So those people actually have vouchers and we also provide support to them. Um, just to let you know, if you drive by this apartment complex, you would notice that you will see no residents hanging outside. You don't see people using drugs. Everybody in our complex are very respectful. And, and we have, I think we only had one incident since we built this particular complex here. This is Quest, um, um, Veteran Village. This is where we house our veterans. We got 12 units, garden style apartments there. We use this for permanent support and housing. So we support our vet veterans in this location uh, with all the services there for these particular veterans. And I don't know if you have any questions, but that is Quest Community in a nutshell. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Jerry. Any questions for the commissioners? Sure. Okay. Vice Chairman Carthen, you have the floor. Impressive. Mm, thank you. <laughs> I grew up in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Perry Holmes, Hollywood oh, yeah. Court. So I know exactly where you are. Um, I just wonder where where is um, what the uh, the Quest Common West Side? Where in the West is it? Um, that that is. The, that's right behind our building, our headquarters. So okay. if you look at the headquarters, it's right behind us. Street. Um, I think it's Rock, <coughs> Rock Street, Rock, Rock Street. Yeah, I think that's in, the name in, of the street. In relation to downtown Atlanta, are you west side near west side. IKEA or west side near? Um, by the AU Center, by the, the AU whole Center. way, uh, the whole complete west side over there. Not too Okay. Yeah. Got you. Close to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Not okay. Far. Yeah. I know exactly where you are. Okay. And so how long have y'all been doing this type of project in Atlanta? 20 years. 20 years. 20 years um, since um, Leonard started this organization. But he really started focusing on housing. That's why, you know, they, he just hired me about five months ago. Uh, because you know when you provide those type of services to the um, to the um, um, homeless, right. um, you have to provide other you know you have to provide housing for them. If they don't have a stable place to live, then you cannot provide services to them. So um, that's why now we are working on about 500 units right now. We just received um, $10 million from um, Invest Atlanta on the new market tax credits. We got $10 million from the Office of Budget and Planning, the governor's office. Uh, it was $100 million that he had left over from the COVID, but he wanted to use it towards affordable housing. So he gave us an organization uh, $10 million out of the $100 million statewide dollars there uh, for our investment. So um, we get a lot of support from the Witcher Foundation um, so that allow us to provide those type of affordable housing for the underprivileged and the low income folks because we have to subsidize those dollars there. Yeah. I'm curious as to how you all do your supportive treatment services with Quest Care. Because it's one thing to provide housing, right? But it's a right. whole other thing in order to provide those services. That has to be a stand up, you know, operation. So how do you do that and where does the funding from that come from? Oh, well we get um <laughs> We received the grant, um, um, Chanel, she runs that department. Okay. 
And um, so this we, is grant based. Yeah, it's pretty much grant okay. based. All okay. of that is grant based for those particular services there. Grants and foundations support us um, for those particular dollars in order to provide those services to the people. And we have, you know, um, HUD and um, the Veteran Administration and other government agencies, agency, federal government agencies, give us dollars to provide those particular services. So I think we had like a 20 year contract agreement with them to provide those particular services <coughs> to those people with Quest Care. Got you. So you're inside the Atlanta city limits. Do they help? Does any of the city council or Fulton County commissioners help with these projects? Is this a public private partnership outside of DCA and? Uh, oh yeah, we work very closely with um, Atlanta housing. Authority. Uh, majority, uh, majority of our land and dollars come from them. Mm -hmm. um, they actually um, sell their land to us. We bid on it and we buy it very affordable from them. Like right now, we're doing single family homes right now. Atlanta Housing Authority owns those um, land and lots. So they're gonna give it to us for a dollar a piece for the homeowner, potential homeowner. So we're looking at doing the single family so we can have home ownership on the west side so people can actually home, own homes there. So that's how we work. And we get a lot of money from HUD. But it goes through the Atlanta Housing Authority. They apply for the dollars through HUD, then it and comes then to they, us on our projects. Got you. So I know Amy works with the <laughs> Douglas County, Douglasville <laughs> Housing Authority. Yeah, so I was just come up to the mic for me. So we don't. Yes, currently with Douglasville's Housing Authority, I used to serve on the advisory committee for Atlanta Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently, just side note, currently using them as a state, uh, a case study in order to implement a process to be consistent across the United States. So that's something currently working on. And my urge for your support is to help get the state on the same pace with that. Uh, we are seeing that difference of what is being paid on a county level for our Douglas County residents okay. uh, for our housing versus what we're able to get receive on Atlanta housing. So this is, that is state funding and that's where we're definitely gonna need uh, urging from you guys to help and assist with that. City, Douglasville is handling the city side, but we are going to need the Douglas County side to get that help. Got you. So, so you know, I'm, I'm listening to all this, and, you know, it's great, right? But Douglas County is a different animal based on where, you know, this, mm -hmm. the housing, the um, Atlanta Housing Authority is, right? Their dollars and, and their support is deep. Whereas ours is basically just getting started. That's why we have to put good people on our boards in order for us to be able to, to get the types of housing that, you know, people can't afford in Douglas County. Right. So, you know, we're, we're in the infancy stages, whereas you're dealing with people who are in master's programs in, in Atlanta <laughs> and dealing with housing and affordable housing and veterans housing. Um, we just stood up through CSB a veterans housing, um, what, last year, I believe it was? Mm -hmm. Last year about this time last year so that just tells you how far behind we are right we know we need it it's just having the infrastructure the people and then getting us to be able to partner with those who have the 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 um the ability to help us to move beyond right. where we are right. so right. but I, I i love the program i love what you guys are doing thank you for coming and, and just to and add on that, that yeah. commissioner the beautiful thing in why i'm vetting this company uh, was very key because they are very familiar how the grant process works. Mm -hmm. um, I think many of you know how, how I am on asking questions and, and trying to dive deep into the way that we should be looking at Douglas County the way it should be for our residents. And so finding and vetting the company that has that background, um, because not just from Invest Atlanta, but as you heard, it's the federal funding across the board. And utilizing Atlanta as our, as our major uh, city you know, being an MSA of that is going to actually help get us, get a, you know, get more funding for what we actually need. Um, but it will take just, you know, everyone in that urging, you know, I'm, I'm going to be at the Capitol next week. So, you know, <laughs> whatever we got to do. Uh, but it definitely hearing from our elected officials in order to help move that needle would be vital because we do have a lot of people, a lot of residents living in hotels and that's not stable for the students, right? Absolutely. So this is a very viable and financially responsible, uh, in my opinion, uh, solution for what we would need. Yeah, and you have to know how to go out and get the money, apply for the money. So once you build up your team, because it's state money, 
So he goes to any county or city or municipality that applied for it. And a lot of um, municipalities don't apply for it because they don't know nothing about it. So you have to get those dollars and bring it into your community. So we had a, a lot of municipal, not municipalities, but organizations try, would like for us to model our program and bring it to their community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we happy to do that. That's why we call it the West Side, but we can take it anywhere else and, and, and duplicate this model. And this but. is also additional training, as, as if it would even matter. But, you know, this is someone who's come up under H.J. Russell and understanding how that sequence of, of getting from building to contracts to all, all the, the points that what it means to be successful. This is someone who's come up under that that administration to, to, to know how to do it. So, I, mm -hmm. again, I really appreciate you guys' time and uh, hope for consideration on it. Thank you. Thank you. I yield, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Any other questions, board? All right, I just had one remark. Oh, uh, Commissioner, okay. I um, just had one question. I, I heard you, Jerry, mention supportive housing. Certainly would like uh, Ray Lifer to be at the table because we do have supportive uh, housing here in Douglas County, about 167 units, but they're just spread it throughout the community. So it's not in a consolidated form. So I just would, you know, I don't want the, the narrative to be that Douglas County is not involved with supportive housing. We already, I believe we made a couple of steps. Can we make more? Perhaps, but I just want to let you know we are already in the game and would love for you. Have you met Ray Lightford? And I would love to put us together and see if we can chat. Okay, I will I'll see what I can do to facilitate that. Okay, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, you have, have the floor. Well, first of all, thank you and, thank and, you. and truly appreciate it. And I know, Amy, <laughs> you, you, you definitely are on the right track. And we've had many conversations about affordable housing, size of housing, and all that good stuff. But, but with your program, I, I noticed we, we all kind of made the statement earlier that it's mainly in that western side or in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Any any progress or anything other than Atlanta that you've done outside of Atlanta? I mean, any smaller communities, smaller counties, or or smaller municipalities that you brought your program to that neighborhood and <laughs> created that affordable housing? No. Not yet. Okay. Uh, okay. But we That's are okay. open to that. Um, we had well, several municipalities and schools that asked us to come and speak to them about, you know, our program. But we haven't. Well, so, so when, when, in speaking to them, do you somehow come up? With it's just identifying. Them. Oh, so. Find that land because of the step states to get to the microphone. So, so the because of the current admission, uh, administration's initiative within the city of Atlanta to be able to add additionally 20,000 more affordable housing, mm -hmm. it happens to be a little easier maneuver like you mentioned before. When looking outside the city of Atlanta and the different counties or different cities, trying to identify land that one, either the city or county already owns so that it can be an affordable solution. Got it. When dealing with the private community, then, you know, you already know it's a bit more. <laughs> right. Well, well that's, what, that's what I was alluding to because I, so it sounds to me that I, like any municipality, any uh, commission or whomever else, you, you guys will need the land and then you apply yourself to the grants and, and any other federal dollars and state right. dollars and all that kind of good stuff from HUD perspective to possibly make something like this work, I right. guess. Because right now with inflation, with all things that are going on today, the cost of doing business and, and land cost and just, uh, it, it's expensive. And, that, and that's why I agree rent has went off the Richter scales. The cost of housing, affordable housing is n not existence based on the cost of what people are buying it per square foot. But with that, so your, your ask is for us to, to, to partner with you guys with Quest but on top of, hopefully there are there there land that we could possibly partner with, and I guess you guys would do the building and the, con the construction and all this other good stuff to keep it affordable, because the land cost would be at hypothetically at a dollar at, at at a nominal cost, I guess. Right. Yes, that is correct. So that's how the program works based on on Quest. Yes, because majority of the land that we have it came from Atlanta Housing Authority. It's pretty much their land and their land bank land that we work with right. with those guys. So we very rarely go out and buy land. Right. Uh, most of them are donated to us so we can be, be able to provide the affordability. Even when we build in these 
these single family homes today over there on the west side, they still coming out to the dollar is still coming out to three hundred to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars per home. So that still kind of be kind of hard, right. but we find other ways of getting grants to buy down the home for those particular um, residents. So we can actually give them a hundred thousand dollars of down payment assistance mm -hmm. on that particular home, so they can actually afford that particular home. So. What determines that number that you use as affordable? Because someone told me the other day affordable was twenty three to three thousand dollars in rent. I said, "Whoa, that's what you call affordable." Not what I would call affordable. How who, how do you determine that? What's that formula that gets you there? Based on the um, the area of media income and that particular community, you know, like everything else in life, it's um, supply and demand. Correct. You know, so that's how those particular homes are, you know, being priced. <laughs> because we cannot sell homes at two hundred thousand dollars or less, because now you are interfering with the other residents in that particular community that is correct. knocking down their value of their particular home. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative the way to make homes um, affordable. It is something for us to even consider, uh, you know, those that we have tax liens against, things that the city is looking to, um, I, I haven't uh, seen in any uh, land bank uh, lists for those. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, something to also consider when our county is getting ready to do foreclosures, um, it's something I've spoke with HUD on mm -hmm. um, when we have the HUD homes coming available, FHA foreclosures. If the city does look to take those back, it's something to reintroduce those NSP properties back to Douglas County. That's another way of bringing affordable options um, back to Douglas County. So there's a lot of different solutions. It's just really sitting at the table to say what is the, the best one. Um, but again, I don't know what we have okay. on, on, okay. on a roster yet. But I'm happy to always sit down with y'all and make that happen. And last but not least, Amy, what's the ask of this board? Please, by all means. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I need, uh, well, not what I need, but Douglas County really does need uh, permanent placement housing in Douglas County. We do need uh, definitely your step in for Department of Community Affairs so we can get those rates up. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that does come from officials making that ask. Um, and so, yes, definitely, please, you, you know, utilize Quest Communities as that resource to be, uh, be a builder here, be, be a developer here to, for us to be able to house our, our vulnerable residents. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is longer than our meeting is going to be, but let me get on through this. I appreciate it. Um, th this topic, obviously, is important to me. I appreciate full disclosure. I had a chance to go and uh, visit Quest and was impressed, was blown away. Like, wow. It's one thing to look at some videos. It's one to, to walk through it, to feel the resonance. Right? So when I relate, I'm, I'm relating from a different perspective. Like, okay, look, you know, and all types of individuals. Right, right there. And so in talking to these guys, I thought it was good to bring them out to sort of stir uh, our, our, our insight. I've been here 14 years and I've seen us not focus on residential at all the way we should, like we do economic development. Are we excellent at economic development, but on the housing side, now nah, we sort of leave that alone. We leave it to the realtors and the developers and stuff, but oh, but we, uh-huh, the guy moves. We've been sitting on a land bank since Charlie Kemp gave me that book that's sitting on my, my office right now. I was talking to the cash commissioner about, okay, so what are we doing about that? He said, well, I've approached the county a couple of times, like, okay, like, okay, let me get into this. There are tools in a toolbox that we can sort of address certain things, like, I see. We already know what the vacant land list, how many times I've circulated to us. Sometimes it's, do we know what to do with it? Capital stack, I want y'all to see, this is top tier financing. Come look at this. It's just a stir, not saying you got to do it that way. A capital stack is a capital stack, however you want to organize and stuff. But the point is, but there's money out there. Now, right now, you got 100 years at Yale, you got some COVID money left up. Like, look, it's just spotting. Let's not marginalize and validate what he just shared with us. Like, well, I don't know about y'all, but we rolling. We've earned it. Come look at us, but it's, you know, they say, we'll help you, but if you think you got it, okay, well, we'll keep moving. 
but I appreciate that. But I look at us and, but I just watched my uncle move all the way from, from what, well, I know, Ma, I gotta tell a story. Left Atlanta, right here in Douglas County, went to Vegas with them all. Blocks of unemployed, homeless, five, six blocks, almost like a township. I'm like, uh uh, we talk about our tents, like, ooh, look at this. Different market, I get it, but we have our own version of it. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? It's hidden right now. We push them around. Guys, it's getting more expensive. And we have, it, we just gotta focus on it. We focus on what we wanna focus on. And we do have capacity. It's just gotta be a priority of the board. Is, is it our priority? Yeah, we have a veterans complex. Yes, we got, we got, um, 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 we got, um, desegregated out there in the community, integrated community, uh, as Madam Chair says, for our housing. Yeah, but is that sustainable? Can you sustain that? Uh, yeah, and now, I know I've got residents. It's not just about being poor or the affluence versus poverty conversation. I'd rather not do that right now. That's not what it's about. People actually get three, two incomes, one income, no income. People living in their apartments um, that now are pushed out into other communities. They're living out their houses, I mean, pushed out their houses into cars, cars into the front of the Mercer, wherever the case may be. Don't do that, guys. These are our friends and our neighbors that people take, they've been taking a hit. We just don't have to look at it. We just like, look, I, I can see it better than y'all and I can't see to feel their pain. Does anybody see me? Will anybody fight for me? But anyway, I won't belabor this. Thank you, you answered Commissioner Mitchell's question, what is really the ask, Madam Chair? I think this is something that, to your point, get with Ray Lightford, that's where you start here in Douglas County, and I guess we go from there. Madam Chair, no more questions, I yield. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, board? All right, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Thank, thank you, you. Amy and Jer Jerry. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move right along. We have the approval of the minutes for the commission meeting minutes of February 7th, 2023, the work session minutes of February 6th, 2023, and the executive session minutes of February 6th, 2023. Board of Commissioners, are there any deletions, additions, or corrections that need to be made? No. Being none, the minutes stand approved. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. We're going to move on to our financial report, which is tab number four, acceptance of the monthly financial budget report for the month of January 2023. Our Chief Financial Officer, Ramona Bivens, uh, will be presenting. I believe she's here. Yes. Yeah, she's here. <laughs> Madam CFO, thank you so much for bringing us a report tonight. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, and Commissioners. Um, so I don't actually have a presentation. The um, the report is added to the act. Actually, should have been up with the minutes because it's just to codify uh, what the Finance Committee did yesterday. Okay. So we don't actually have a presentation to provide, but it will be available to the public. We're working on getting those added to the website. Okay. If you could just say that once again for the public, it will be added. Yes, we're getting. We're working on getting those uploaded to the website so the public can see them as well. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Madam you. CFO. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right on to our proclamations. We have tab number five, proclaiming the month of March 2023 as developmental. Disability Awareness a Month here in Douglas County. And we have with us tonight our own Jasmine Moore, who works here in the county. Good evening or good afternoon, Jasmine. Is, is it on? Uh, it's not on. Hold on one second. Somebody out of the Rick is coming. Okay, oh, can y'all hear me? Make it okay. work. <laughs> do you want the, the cordless mic to do that as opposed to holding that down like that? Let's get the cordless mic so she can there. Yeah, make that let's make that work. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes, yes we perfect. can. Yes. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you. Um, so first, I will read the 
actual proclamation that was drafted and has been approved by Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners. This proclamation is in recognition of March as Developments with Disabilities Awareness Month. Whereas over 6 million individuals in the United States are diagnosed with a developmental disability. And whereas individuals diagnosed with a developmental disability consist of all racial, ethnic, educational, social, and economic backgrounds and are all valued members of society. And whereas in 1967, there was a public proclamation encouraging Americans to provide individuals with developmental disabilities the encouragement and opportunities they need to lead productive lives and achieve their full potential. And whereas all too often, the needs of citizens and their families with developmental disabilities are not at the forefront of the minds of the public and those who are not directly affected by a developmental disability. And whereas there are 3,000 240 students in the Douglas County school system that have a developmental disability. And whereas the month of March is recognized as Developmental Disabilities Month to increase awareness and foster compassion and understanding to the challenges faced by individuals and their families with developmental disabilities. And whereas although progress has been made and steps have been taken, to support the needs of those who live with a developmental disability and their families, we still have a long way to go. And whereas during this month, we seek to raise awareness about the inclusion of individuals with developmental disability in all aspects of community life. And we acknowledge the barriers that individuals with developmental disabilities and their families still face in connecting to the communities in which they live. And whereas we value what is important to individuals with disabilities and their families who are striving for everyday lives, no different than that of all other citizens. And whereas we are committed to embracing the diverse abilities of all our citizens and supporting those abilities. And whereas we recognize and welcome the contributions that these citizens bring to this community and recognize the efforts that Grateful Hands Inc a nonprofit organization have made to make Douglas County inclusive for citizens of all abilities and their families. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of March as Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month in Douglas County and reaffirm Douglas County's commitment to creating a community that honors, includes, and encourages all members of our community. So that is the conclusion of the proclamation. Um, I did have something to add if it's inappropriate. It's, it's appropriate, okay. go for it, Jasmine. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and members of this great community that are present this evening. My name is Jasmine Moore, and I'm the founder and CEO of Grateful Hands Incorporated, which is a nonprofit organization. Not being properly equipped to handle the needs your children may have. Finding the proper resources to help your child thrive in medical, educational, and social realms. Teaching your child social norms that come naturally to others. Long waiting lists for needed support. Being judged because you respond to things slower than others. Missed days of work and loss of income. These are just a few challenges that families and individuals with developmental disabilities face. Grateful Hands Incorporated was founded to educate others on the challenges individuals with disabilities face. We also advocate for and teach others how to advocate for those who feel voiceless and unheard when their complaints are voiced. Lastly, we empower individuals with disabilities to find their strength and power in their uniqueness. My life's experience having a disability have been disheartening and disappointing at times, but I am so grateful for them because it gave me this platform. Grateful Hand and its mission, bridging the gap between individuals with disabilities and the world through education, advocacy, and empowerment are so personal and important to me. At Grateful Hands Inc., we vow to use our voice 
and hands to make a difference in our community. Former President Ronald Reagan realized the need to increase public awareness regarding the needs and the potential of Americans with developmental disabilities. Just 36 years ago, individuals with developmental disabilities being productive citizens and integrated into their communities with people without a developmental disability was a far-fetched idea. The purpose of this month is to raise awareness about the inclusion of people with developmental disabilities in all aspects of community life, as well as shine a light on the barriers that people with disabilities still sometimes face in connecting to the communities in which they live. I personally have not been diagnosed with a developmental disability, but that is not what this is about. That is not what advocacy is about. Sometimes advocacy looks like speaking up and fighting for a cause that doesn't directly affect you, but fighting for it like it does because there is a greater cause beyond you. This proclamation is about the families that work with me behind the scenes to make this proclamation happen, some of which are here tonight. We have a long way to go. However, recognize this month in Douglas County is helping bridge that gap. This is about the teachers who teach these students every day some of which are here tonight as well. We have a long way to go, however, recognizing this month in Douglas County is helping bridge that gap. It takes everyone to create diverse and inclusive communities full of strength, compassion, understanding, and love. In my conclusion, I want to leave you with this quote. Diversity is having a seat at the table, inclusion is having a voice, and belonging is having that voice be heard. The approval of this proclamation and being here tonight is having the voices of families and individuals with developmental disabilities be heard. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and Douglas County for making this county a more inclusive community for all citizens. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Jasmine Moore, and certainly we are excited to have you be part of our employment uh, team here in Douglas County. You are doing a great, uh, great job. You work in the district attorney's office, am I correct? Yes. And you have made a world of a difference in this organization. And thank you for being the president and CEO of Grateful Hands, uh, Inc., uh, and with your extraordinary power and strength in your leadership, you have increased awareness, fostered compassion and understanding and addressed the challenges related to de developmental disabilities in our, in our community here. I would like to just say that we thank you for everything that you're doing. You may think that we're not watching you, but I am. I see you every single day and you always have a smile on your face. And I ask that everyone in the audience, if you could join me in the Board of Commissioners with standing and giving this young woman a hand for all the things that she's doing in our community. <laughs> Board of Commissioners, you've heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor, Board of Commissioners. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> I, had, okay, I heard your voice, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, you have the floor. Okay. You have the floor. Well, Jasmine, you, you know we're proud of you. And most of all, we're proud that you understand that there's no, there is a such thing as disability. However, you look at it in a different lens, and I commend you. Uh, I know we go way back, you and your sister and your, your mom and dad, even though he has a slow game of basketball, but at the end of the day, <laughs> but, but at the end of the day though, we, you and your family, you've got that, what I call that family support, that, that this mental side of disability doesn't affect you. You doesn't see it, you don't see it that way. So. I just want to say to you, even when you served as my, uh, um, my intern, you, you just always seems to amaze me at all the things that you challenge yourself to do. And then to get uh, an employment here at Douglas County. So I just, you never seem to amaze me. Uh, I've seen you from 
a fur ball up until now. <laughs> and I just want to say that and let you know that we're proud of you. We're proud of you and we're proud of your family and your mom and everybody else, all that they do to encourage you to be all that you can be. And you're doing just that. So congratulations and thanks for asking to, for me to support this particular uh, proclamation for March. And um, kudos. Keep up the great work. And don't let nothing get in your way. Don't let nothing stop you. Just do and be you and be all that you can be. Thank you again. I yield, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, something you, you, you stated about all disabilities. Probably within, at this rate, in six months, I'll be totally blind. Totally blind. See about do a little hold. It, it's, it's going fast. And being able to function in society, understanding what that means to perform, right? Recognizing, hoping that others will understand and accommodate. I get it. There are barriers. Like you said, make room for us. Don't you see us? Do you understand us? What, what were your words? Uh, you want us to act the way you want us to act? Oh, this is good. This does stand for fighting for, advocating for those who can't fight for themselves. I'll, I'll, I'll come stand with you on this because, again, I get it. You, you try to teach, you try to share for those parents that are out there that are listening to this. I, I understand it. I live it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to be successful and all right. Then every now and then you have clashes with the, as they say, the haves, the haves nots, the, the, those who are included and not included. And, and, and again, it's, it's what it is and to limit, though. The, the, the exploitation, the, the things that happen, the, 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 you, you're discounted or marginalized or whatever happened. Like, no, I get it. And that's, that's for those of us who live in that space. I'm only talking to us. I get it. I get it deeply. And I appreciate this type of proclamation. This is okay. Now, this is we're standing up for. I can fight for real estate and all that all day long, but I'll let them handle this. But this one, oh, I got this. Because again, we do need coverage. And I'm like, okay, Lord, maybe this is what I got. I'm supposed to join with her. We used to drive around, we would be up there on that third floor. I'm like, okay, I got it. You touch from one generation to the next. Like you find your calling, your purpose, stand up like, all right, but what about everybody else? Who will sit there and look at, that, like I said, the, the exposure that comes from being different. I mean, you got to imagine, like, okay, I got to do this different. I mean, I wasn't born this way, but still falling into it, it's like, woo. But I understand to the parents, like, I know there's a, there's a space for us and there's comfort. And we, we will bring awareness. We will make the system what they call federal reasonable accommodation. Oh, we got this. But it starts with, with moments like this in this proclamation. And so from the depth of my heart, from the depth of my heart, uh, I am with you, and I won't go any further. We will catch up with you later. But, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make that statement, not just for the moment, but just for the greater all of Douglas County. Like, no, we, can, we got this, and we're going to make room for, uh, for everybody of all disability, of all persuasion, of all everything for all humanity. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other discussion, board? If not, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Uh, and this um, pro proclamation is approved. Board of Commissioners, let's uh, join um, Jasmine Moore down. And, and if she brought anyone with her to stand, we will be all, yes, we'll stand her together. Mommy and her family is I think, here, I'm, yes. oh, your family, your, fa Can your I family, say if you would come up. We're going to take some? So I Absolutely. do have some teachers in the audience yeah, right. that came tonight. So yes. I wanted to recognize them. 
for coming here and being a part of this because I think it is very um, instrumental to acknowledge people who deal with individuals with developmental dis disabilities on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have two teachers here, and then I also have a family here who was very instrumental in um, helping me. I spoke to the mom of this family in great detail because I wanted to get her thoughts on um, what it was like having a developmental disability. And so she wasn't able to make it, but she sent um, her children and Mr. Rick here. So if they're here, they can stand. But I did want to acknowledge those people because they were instrumental in this proclamation being what it is today. So I just wanted to acknowledge them. Okay. Better yet, we love everyone that's involved in this proclamation to be part of the photograph. So if you could just come down, please, that would be great. And the, joint, uh, the Board of Commissioners will join you. Uh, we're going down. All right, Board of Commissioners, we will allow our, our citizens to exit the room, the ones that are leaving at this point. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we will move right into our public hearing, which is tab number six. Tab number six is a public hearing for a certificate of compliance with the Metropolitan River Protection Act for property at 3945 Highway 166 Fairburn Road in Douglas County, Georgia. And we have our manager, Duncan, here tonight to speak on this matter and brief us before I open the public hearing. You have the floor, um, Allison Duncan. All right. You have the floor. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. Uh, tonight we bring forward um, another uh, certificate of compliance with the Metropolitan River Protection Act. Um, again, this is a 2,000-foot corridor along the Chattahoochee River. Um, this is uh, for property located, let's see, you had read the address, um, uh, uh, on Georgia Highway 166. Um, we do have a presentation with some slides if you would like to see it. It's up on the screen. I can run through that quickly. Yes. Um, but briefly, uh, Metropolitan River Protection Act, or MERPA, um, as it's called for short, goes back to 1972. That's when ARC completed uh, the study of the Chattahoochee Corridor. In 1973, the Georgia General Assembly adopted um, the act. So again, just as a reminder, this is state law. In 1998, the corridor extended from Peachtree Creek down to West Point Lank. So it was 1998 when Douglas County first gets incorporated in the act. Um, 
in the, in the past, I know there's been some questions about, you know, what are these different categories under the Act, and so that's what we're sharing with you here tonight. Um, there are six natural characteristics, and you can see those there before you. But basically, when they looked at the 2,000-foot corridor along the Chattahoochee River, um, they created a composite score that included vegetation, soils, hydrology, slopes, um, and geology, right? And so they kind of combined all of that together, gave it a score, and so this gives you an overview of what that kind of looks like. You know that you've heard us refer to this before as a camouflage map along the corridor. And so when we get into the specific property that's before you for consideration tonight, you can see the, the colored area there um, on the site plan. That shows the very rear portion um, of, the, of the building that's under consideration. This is actually the first of what will be two buildings. We're bringing this forward in two pieces so that the first building can go ahead um, and get its certificate of compliance if you're inclined to approve this request. Um, the second building will come at a later date um, as they are continuing to work through the process. You can see with the first building, the majority of it is out of the corridor, but there is a small portion that is within the corridor. Um, we have the calculations here, again, just because sometimes you ask us some questions about how exactly, you know, does this act work and how are the calculations um, derived. And so you can see that essentially, based on that, that pattern of the map, you're given a, a certain percentage of land disturbance and a certain percentage of overall impervious surface. Um, and so we work out those calculations. We send everything through the Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, the Atlanta Regional Commission issues their findings. Um, and so in regard to this one, the Atlanta Regional Commission has come back and they have said that the project does provide a level of land and water resource protection equivalent to land disturbing activity that is consistent with the plan. So they have approved um, the overall project with their findings and staff is recommending approval of the certificate of compliance. Uh, the applicant is here this evening if you have specific questions for them. But otherwise, that concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, um, Allison Duncan. Board of Commissioners, you have any questions? Okay, and I'm going to open up the public hearing. Okay, thank you. All right, citizens of Douglas County, this public hearing is now open. The public hearing is for a certificate of compliance with the Metropolitan River Protection Act for property at the 30, at 3945 Highway 66 Fairburn Road here in Douglas County. This public hearing is now open. Do we have anyone here to speak on behalf of this um, certificate of compliance for the uh, Metropolitan River Protection Act? Okay. Sin, no one is here to speak on behalf. Anyone here to speak against or in opposition of? Being none, this public hearing is now closed. All right, Allison, if you could just come back to the podium. Board of Commissioners, certainly you heard Allison's uh, description uh, regarding this public hearing and the purpose. Do you have any questions for her at this time? All right, I will call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the public hearing for a certificate of compliance with the, with the Metropolitan River Protection Act for property at 3945 Highway 166 Fairburn Road here in Douglas County? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Board, any discussion? We have a motion. No discussion. We have a motion and second. Please prepare to cast your electronic votes. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries for the approval of this public hearing Thank and for much. the Certificate of Compliance with the Metropolitan River Protection Act for this property, as Thank noted. You. Thank you. We're going to move on to new business, Board of Commissioners. Uh, board, uh, the tab number seven, which is an approval of an intergovernmental agreement, which is an IGA, with the City of Austell resolving the SDS, which is Service Delivery uh, Strategy, uh, and loss, local option sales tax, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number eight, which is a business item. First, I will uh, call a motion to untable the item. 
The uh, item is authorization to approve the 2023 equitable sharing agree agreement and certification for Douglas County Sheriff's Office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal re review. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to untable this item? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, uh, and the motion carries to untable uh, business item tab number eight. Board of Commissioners, I will call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve, or should I say authorization, to approve the 2023 equitable sharing agreement and certification for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review? Do we have a motion? So moved. I'll do the second. Second, Chair. Okay, you have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your electronic votes. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries to approve the business item, which is tab number eight. We're going to move right on into the consent agenda. Board of Commissioners, please be mindful that all items are subject to final legal review. I will certainly yield the floor to our Deputy Clerk, Sherry Mathis, to allow her to read the consent agenda tonight. Deputy Clerk, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Number nine, authorization to accept a justice system partner grant, understanding the drivers of prosecutorial decision making in the amount of $8,000 with no match required, a term of January 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 10, authorization to apply for the fiscal year 24 CACJ slash CJCC reimbursement grant for the Family Treatment Court and Chance Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 11, authorization to accept the Georgie County Internship Program grant from the ACCG Civic Affairs Foundation for two positions, human resources and planning and zoning for a maximum reimbursable amount of $2,400 per intern position for a term of May 1st, 2023 to September 1st, 2023, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 12, authorization to submit a letter of support for the Trust for Public Lands Raise Grant application for Riverlands Greenway Trail Project in the amount of $5 million from the U.S. DOT through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act federal program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 13, authorization to accept fiscal year 23 AG 2307.1 aging subgrant contract amendment in the amount of $567,530.49 from the Atlanta Regional Commission with an in-kind match of $41,713.15, amendment with amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 14, authorization to accept a brace grant for $2,500 from the Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 15, authorization to approve a car allowance agreement for Valerie Vi, Chief Assistant Solicitor General in the amount of $280 per pay period and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Name change only. Number 16, approval of, approval of an ICON online dispute resolution agreement with Catalyst Courts and Land Records LLC in the amount of $6,000 to be fun funded by the State Court Technology Fund and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. 
Number 17, authorization to approve the 2023 Equitable Sharing Agreement and Certification for Douglas County District Attorney's Office and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 18, approval of Memorandum of Understanding with Douglasville Church of Christ for use of their fellowship hall, restrooms, kitchen, and one office space to be utilized by Douglas Senior Services during the renovation of the Fairburn Road Senior Center at the cost of $1,000 per month to be funded by the Senior Services Department and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 19, authorization to execute a service agreement with Kone Inc. for continued elevator maintenance at the Douglas County Courthouse in the amount of $840 per month to be funded by the Department's 2023 budget and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 20, authorization to renew the 2020 service agreement with CBM Atlanta Inc. for continued janitorial services at the Douglas County Courthouse at an annual cost of $100,987.80 with no increased cost and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 21, authorization to extend the contract with Yellowstone Landscape for the mowing and litter removal of various roads throughout the county for eight cycles in the total amount of $928,800 to be funded by Public Works DOT Division budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 22, authorizations to renew the contract with Harris Local Government in the amount of $31,079.40 for printing and mailing approximately 55,400 assessment, assessment notices to be funded by the appraisal department's budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 23, Approval of contract renewal with Carbine C Live Universe in the amount of $9,500 to be funded by E911's 2023 budget effective April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 24, authorization to award a consulting services contract in the amount of $38,649 and 86 cents to Pond and Company pursuant to RFQ 19-017 for design services for the um, SR 92 slash Fairburn Road at Lake Monroe Road intersection improvement project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOS funds currently allocated to the project as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 25. Authorization to approve change order number three for integrated construction and nobility, Inc. in the amount of $27,985 for rerouting electrical lines due to construction of dugouts and installation of new fencing at Billart Park to be funded by the 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Rec Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 26. Authorization to amend the Douglas County Animal Control Budget in the amount of $21,774.45 received from Travelers Insurance to have damaged vehicle, vehicle repaired and placed back in service. Number 27, ratification of software agreement with NICE for the District Attorney's Office in the total amount of $146,200 to be funded through the previously approved ARPA technology funds as recommended by the Technology Committee pending final legal review. 28, authorization to purchase emergency pickles for the new Fire Station 9, one Pierce Enforcer pump truck including equipment and one Pierce Enforcer 107 straight stick aerial truck for a total of $2,539,851 utilizing 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Number 29, approval to accept Medicare's increase in upper payment limit for patient transport and authorization to accept supplemental payment of $100. $13,218.88 and to release the state's share of $31,452.20 to 
to the Department of Community Health, amend the budget, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Clerk Mathis. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor, board. Any discussion? Just one minute. Okay. Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. Yeah, this is dealing with number 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 15. I don't need anybody to come down regarding this. It's regarding the um, car allowance, uh, which I, I, I have no problem with. The issue is that yesterday our peers asked for information regarding our current car uh, allowance policy that does not exist, um, as well as the, the set of individuals who currently get, which is roughly over 40 people, who get car allowances, uh, which is all over the board. I just want to confirm that my peers did get that information, and so I guess we'll take this up at some future time to be consistent since it's contract-based, it's tied to compensation, but I have no problem with the current thing, Madam Chair. I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Dr. Corbin, we're working on that generating policy, right? You want to speak into the mic and just share? Yes, where we, we did are. receive the information and we've uh, started the process to, to, to uh, address um, this particular issue. Thanks. All right. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor for this consent agenda. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay. Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, item number 20, I know it says Mark Price, but since our, um, our procurement director, Latanya Amons, is here, I'd like to, to get her take on this. So the authorization to renew the 2020 service agreement with CBM Inc. Um, to continue janitorial services with Douglas County Courthouse. So this is a... Uh, a continual contract since 2020, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Good evening. Good evening. The um, CBM uh, was awarded the uh, RFP from 2019, so their first year was in 2020. Um, the con they continued work in 2021 and 2022, and so um, I need to officially extend the contract um, for 2023, and this will be uh, year four um, for that particular contract. Okay, and our procurement guidelines state that more than, is it three years or five years? Our current guidelines state five years. Um, we are moving to award all contracts for one year with an option to renew. And so that option um, it is not automatic. Um, that depends on if the organization is adhering to the terms and conditions of the particular contract. Um, what I did notice this particular year is um, in moving to um, update all of our records and files, is ensuring that all supporting documentation was attached to all purchase requisitions. Mm -hmm. And so as such, um, that's when we noted that we're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And so we brought this forth because some of the contracts were automatically just rolling over. And so um, with me implementing that new requirement, we're able to determine what is needed going forward and to um, further um, take steps to clean up those particular contracts. And so officially, um, I'm requesting that the board extends the contract for one more year, and my goal is to post a bid, um, three actually janitorial bids um, this particular year, but this particular contract for the courthouse, I'm going to bid out later on in 2023 for um, the opportunity for a new company, if awarded, for 2024, but just to keep all of our books nice and clean. Thank you for that. I yield, Madam thank Chair. You. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carton. We have a motion and a second. Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Just, just Commissioner. Oh, no, Mitchell. no, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're, you're, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Just one uh, item. I just want uh, Dr. Gilcrest, if she would come forth, just so she can express to the general public once again about all the great things that's going to be happening over at the new, newly renovated or newly up and coming renovation of uh, our senior center there on Fairburn Road and. Uh, and where, where we're going with this church renovation, not the church, but moving them to the church as we renovate that particular building. So I just, just wanted the general public to kind of hear your lovely voice and talk about what we got going on. <laughs> Good evening. Mm -hmm. yes. Good evening. <laughs> so the um, MOU is with Douglasville Church of Christ. Um, we are in the process of renovating the Fairburn Road Senior Center 
through um, CDBG grant from the Department of Community Affairs and also through the Board of Commissioners and um, your um, graciousness for matching those dollars that we did receive from the um, CDBG grant. And so the Senior Center, um, right now we are waiting for the permitting piece to be approved and once that is approved, we'll move forward um, with putting bids out. We're also working with um, Director Ammons to make sure that those bids are out and in a timely manner so that we can move forward with the renovations. And just wanna say thank you for you and your team and all the hard work that you're doing to keep our seniors just up and mobile and doing what they do. So thank you again and all the great work that you and your staff is doing. So thank you again, Dr. Gilchrist. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner yeah. Carthen, yes ma'am. <laughs> yes, you, you have the floor, Vice Chair. So, um, at the Douglasville Church of Christ, you will still be able to do Meals on Wheels. You will be able to use their facilities to, to do that, or how are you planning to do that, basically, is my question. Absolutely. All of our current services that we provide um, from the Fairburn Road location, we will be able to do those same services. Um, at the Douglasville Church of Christ. Our Meals on Wheels, um, our, home, our Home Delivered Meals, our Congregate Program, mm -hmm. and our Non-Emergency Transportation. Okay. Um, one of the things with the, um, with, with the transition during the renovations, we're working very closely with the Atlanta Regional Commission because they do extend some provisions. If we don't have our formal kitchen, mm -hmm. they do allow us to partner with um, restaurants or um, other, usually um, they allow you to partner with organizations or companies per se that provide frozen meals. But in Douglas County, we're only one of two counties in hot Georgia, meals. yeah, that we do hot meals and I mm -hmm. absolutely refuse to do frozen meals. Mm -hmm. And so we're, um, we've got a plan in place where we've been in talks with several restaurants in the county and also our team, we will continue to use the kitchen that we have mm -hmm. until we're no longer able to, until they say, you just gotta go because mm -hmm. now we're working in this area. So that's our plan for right now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So. I yield, ma'am. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floorboard. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Oh, I'm so sorry. Commissioner it's Robinson. No, I'm with you. Go ahead, ma'am. No, you have the floor. Good. Thank you, ma'am. No, I didn't hear you. Go on. You have the floor. No, I, I just wanted to piggyback on um, Vice Chairman Carthen's comment about um, the, the contract award. Uh, she, she wasn't present yesterday, but I, I, I want to reemphasize my point that I made yesterday uh, to Director Angus. You don't have to come up, but my, my point was uh, we just roll contracts on back through. I want to make me, I get it. That's the essence of it. We have a policy, it's allowed. Right. I'm like, I asked question, was there any technical review? Was there any? Like, no. This is how we do it. Okay, I want to clarify that all five of us get it. When you're about there looking, what that means when you're applying contract rules. Unless we stop it, we stop it, it rolls. Unless we say that, no, for every one, you need to have three quotes regardless if you're gonna push it back through. Be consistent. I'm just saying, and I'm deadly serious about this. Okay. All right, that's all I wanna say, but I yield, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Board, please prepare to cast your votes, your electronic votes. We have a five unanimous vote and the motion carries Board of Commissioners. All right, and the consent agenda is approved. Right now, Board, we'll move uh, at this moment to our approval of expenses. Board of Commissioners, tab number 30, we have the approval of uh, reimbursement expenses. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second in a discussion, Board. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes.
We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right, we'll go next to announcements. Uh, we have our announcements that will be read by our manager of constituent manager. Ser services. Port of order. Before we. Oh, before she. Yes. Okay. Yes. I've got an announcement that I want to uh, actually have Mr. Penniman come through and uh, just acknowledge some things before we get out of <laughs> Black History Month. And uh, okay. he'll just kind of, from District 1 office, kind of talk about some things that we've kind of came across that we want to acknowledge and recognize some of the local historians that are here in Douglas County. So, Mr. Penniman, I'll leave it up to you. Absolutely. Um, once again, thank you, board, for all the work that you guys do um, in our community. Um, and on behalf of um, Commissioner Mitchell and District 1, we just want to take a couple of moments to recognize that um, within Black History Month, although it is important for us to remember and to celebrate those who are known around the world for blazing trails, such as Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, um, we feel and know that it is equally important to remember and to celebrate our local African-American trailblazers. I'm going to start with some older trailblazers, some that have happened in the past, and then some more recent trailblazers in black history here in Douglas County. So I um, want to take it back to our first African-American to be elected to any county office was Mr. Leonard Danley, and he was elected as the Justice of Peace in Douglas County. Also, Mr. Thomas Zachary was the first African-American to attend an all-white school, Douglas County High School, and was the, it was also the first school to be integrated within this county. Also, uh, Dr. Jim Steele, who has a building at Douglas County High School, they have their new freshman academy that's named after him. He was um, the first African-American superintendent for the Douglas County School Board. Um, some of the others to mention is Mr. Homer Danley, who was the first African-American to serve on the city council for Douglasville. Um, also, Mr. Freddie Ashman, who was the first African-American to serve as a as commission chair of Douglas County. Also want to take time to recognize Judge Barbara Caldwell, who was the first African-American female to serve as a judge in Douglas County. Um, and Miss Sarah Whitaker, who was the first African-American female bailiff in Douglas County. Now getting to some more recent history. Um, Mr. D.T. Jackson was the first African-American to serve as chair of the Douglas County School Board. Ms. Tracy Rucker Shaw was the first African-American female to serve as chair of the Douglas County School Board. And Ms. Michelle Simmons was the first African-American female to serve as vice chair of the Douglas County School Board. State Representative Kimberly Alexander was also the first African-American to hold a state office representing Paulding and Douglas County, Georgia. Um, and our very own Mr. Henry Mitchell III was the first African-American to serve the longest term as vice mayor or mayor pro tem in the city of Douglasville before assuming the office here as a commissioner. Also, Chief Gary Sparks was the first African-American to hold the position of chief of city police here in Douglasville. Ms. Marcia Hampton was the first African-American to hold a position of city manager for the city of Douglasville. And our very own Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones was the first African American female to serve as commission chair for Douglas County. Um, finally, want to close out with a few others. Um, Judge Cynthia Adams, who was the first African American female to serve at a at the state and superior court level for Douglas County. Judge Christina Peterson, who was the first African American to serve as a probate judge in Douglas County. Miss Annette Stembridge who was the first African-American to hold the position of Douglas County Clerk of Superior Court, and to Sheriff Tim Pounds, who was the first African-American to serve as Douglas County Sheriff, to our Fire Chief, Mr. Roderick Juliavet, who was the first African-American to serve as Fire Chief in Douglas County, also to our very own Katrina Harley, who's back there. Um, I don't know if she recognizes this, but she's actually the first African-American to serve as our E911 Director, so thank you and also to Dolly Racine, who was the first African-American to serve as the Douglas County District Attorney. These are all very um, pivotal and instrumental individuals within our community who have served um, 
I think that it's awesome that they are serving in these capacities, but it does tell me that we have a, a long way to go because some of these offices are being held for the first time by African Americans as recent as 2018, and we are in 2023. So um, at this time, I would like to take a quick moment to give a standing ovation to those who have served in these um, capacities, if you guys wouldn't mind. To all those who are named today on behalf of District 1 and Commissioner Harry Mitchell, we want to send our greatest <clears throat> gratitude for your service to our community and for your trailblazing within our community. Thank you. And with that, I yield. And I'll just make one, uh, uh, one minor correction that uh, Mr. Ashman served as the first African American on the Board of Commissioner, not the chair. And Madam Chair is the first African American to serve, period, as the chair. So I just want to acknowledge that. But outside of that, Great job, and thank you again. Job well done. And I yield, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. And I may also add, if that's okay with my board, I'm the first African-American female in the history of Georgia to win a countywide race uh, for commission chairman. Uh, first African-American female in the history of Georgia since the 1700s. That's a long time. So thank you. Appreciate you highlighting all our wonderful uh, trailblazers here in Douglas County for African American, uh, what we've done to uh, benefit our uh, and contribute to our uh, county and to our country and our nation. So thank you so much, Mr. Penniman. That was wonderful. We're going to move on to our announcements, and we do have a Black History uh, celebration coming up this uh, actually Thursday. So the timing is perfect for your announcement. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, Board. Good evening, County Administration. Um, the Douglas County Black History Program, entitled Celebrating Douglas County's African American Culture and Community, will be on this Thursday, February 23rd, 2023, at 6 p.m., right here at the Douglas County Courthouse. For more information, you can email Leland Alexander at lalexander at douglascountygeorgia.gov or you can email me at kcaudle at douglascountygeorgia.gov and I want to be sure to mention there will be food. <laughs> the probate office will be open on the following Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for all probate services, April 8th. 2023, July 8th, 2023, and October 7th, 2023. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners is accepting applications to serve on the following boards, Cemetery Preservation Committee and the Paratransit Advisory Board. If you are interested in serving on one of these boards, please contact the County Clerk, Lisa Watson, at lwatson at douglascountyga.gov. Applications for the Douglas County Citizens Academy are live and being accepted. This eight-week program gives citizens a look into the inner workings of the county. The first session will meet on Tuesday, March 18th. For more information, please contact Imaji Stewart at istewart at douglascountyga.gov. Senior Services is pleased to announce the Grand Initiative Program for grandparents and other relatives who are caring for children. This program will provide our community of kinship, caregivers, and valuable resources and information. Please call 770-489-3100 or email cgriffith at douglascountyga.gov for more information. That concludes the announcements. I yield. All right. Thank you so much. Uh Ms. Cottle, thank you. Board Commissioners, you have any additional announcements? If you have, uh, Commissioner Car Vice Chairman Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you. We would be remiss if we did not um, state that my soror, uh, Rochelle Robinson, yes. is the first mayor African American for Douglas County. So I just wanted to, to say that. Kudos, soror. I you. All right. Thank you. Yes, our Doug Douglasville mayor. All right, if there's nothing else, Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Robinson, 
Yeah, well, since we're doing the shout outs to love, I, I've, got to give, I've got to give a shout out to my, 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 my second born son um, who turned 23 today. Uh, this past weekend, he went to his fourth state championship and um, fourth final four and three state championships in five straight years. He has been coaching these eight, um, these what I call eighth graders stuff to basketball, um, you know, preeminence. And I'm very proud of him. Christopher, well done, young man. I'm very proud of you. And I'll see you when I get home. I want to yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If there's nothing else to come before this body, but you know what? I believe I need to call an uh, executive session. Uh, Attorney Coleman, do we need to go into executive session? Do we need to? I'm just asking. Madam Chair, I'm not aware if okay. we need to go into executive session. Okay. Personnel. There is a personnel matter that we need to go into executive session for. Yeah, okay. All right, board. And certainly, uh, we will be engaging in um, an executive session to our community and our citizens out here to, and ones that are watching live. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor board. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your districts, please respond. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 unanimous vote and the motion carries to go into executive session. Uh, if we could just uh, exit the room. Thank you all.
All right, we are, I'm assuming, back in session. They didn't. We're back in session, Board of Commissioners, and uh, to the citizens of Douglas County, thank you for your patience uh, as we engaged in our executive session. Board of Commissioners, do we have anything else that uh, we need to discuss today? And I appreciate your time and talent for our voting uh, legislative meeting today. And if there's nothing else to come before this body, this meeting is adjourned. And have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.